Alpine is quickly establishing itself as a regular at the front of the fight behind Formula 1's top three teams and was occasionally even in striking distance of Mercedes. Particularly in qualifying, Alpine can frequently stay up with the front of the midfield and, on rare occasions, even outperform Mercedes. The team is still trailing Alfa Romeo, however, and is now in sixth place in the Constructors' Championship with 40 points. Can Alpine beat Mercedes with new changes and upgrades? Let's know in this video. Subscribe to F1 Viral for staying updated with interesting news about Formula 1. First of all, let's know what the new Alpine improvements are. As a result, the team is getting ready for the next significant A522 update, but first, aerodynamic modifications will be tested on the Lightning Quick Baku City circuit. Safnauer stated in a team news statement that, We have a couple of circuit-specific modified aerodynamic modifications for this weekend before initiating the next wave of upgrades as part of our 2022 development plan. It will be impossible to tune the car properly in Azerbaijan, according to Zafnawa. Although the lengthy straight has a high top speed, the Alpine team principal is aware that there are many slower sectors. The street track in Baku, he explains, is a difficult balance to find. This season, Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon have continued to score points and occasionally put on very outstanding performances, thanks to a pretty intense development push that has produced the form. Alpine has said that it will visit Azerbaijan with a few aerodynamic modifications tailored to the course. It will serve as a sneak peek at the larger projects the French brand has in store. Ocon's top 5 finish in Austria and Alonso's surge from the back of the grid that may have put him in 6th place are examples of the A522's potential and have raised hopes for the upcoming races. A new rear wing, which has improved upon the selection of four different downforce alternatives it has already run this season, contributed to the speed at the Red Bull ring. It appears that this new style falls in between the previous model's medium and high downforce options. Alpine may have achieved significant advancements given that it has picked yet another version, especially when the many iterations are coupled with the beam wing. Previously, Alpine had preferred a main plane design with a flatter profile. Instead, it chose the configuration shown below with a deeper middle part and a shallower outer half. Additionally, as a result of this, the upper flap and the end plate transitions outer section has been modified, significantly changing the cutout. For the prior race at Silverstone, Alpine had a significant improvement package available, the centerpiece of which was a revamp of its sideboard bodywork. The undercut has been deepened at the front of the sideboard as the bodywork has been wrapped even more tightly than before. The bathtub-like upper surface crevice that Ferrari has used on the F175 since the season's beginning has been adopted by the sideboard's upper bodywork. Comparing the configuration at the last two races reveals that Alpine has added a little more adaptability to the cooling guilds. In contrast to the Red Bull ring, it used guilds at Silverstone that followed the contours of the upper surface of the sideboard crevice. The panel has additional holes to dissipate the heat generated inside, and it is positioned higher on the rounded shoulder above. How upgrades change the game for the top stars? Do you want to know? Here's why. The Spanish Grand Prix served as a significant turning point in the crucial Formula 1 annual car development battle for many years. Barcelona was on the most affordable early season event for teams to introduce major upgrade packages created by putting the knowledge gained over the first few rounds of the year to use. Barcelona was one of the earliest European races of the season, frequently the first. This year won't be any different, as numerous teams have already declared they'll be running improvements on their vehicles this weekend. While Aston Martin team principal Mike Crack has previously announced that they will introduce modifications to their car around the Spanish GP, Alpine will be applying upgrades to their car after introducing a redesigned floor in recent rounds. For Mercedes, the race presents a chance to compare their revolutionary zero sideboards to the more traditional model they tested on this track during the first preseason test. Why Mercedes is in danger because of Alpine upgrade? Let's take a look at Mercedes upgrade now. Mercedes seems to be trying to extract air from the floor's front corner, which would lower the pressure there and energize the entire floor. 
This is especially true if the extracted air is successfully redirected into the flow around the side pods, which would increase the flow's energy as it meets the flow leaving the diffuser. Compared to a high-rake automobile, the Mercedes's underfloor has a comparatively shallow angle which restricts how forcefully it can pull the vehicle to the ground. These most recent modifications aim to minimize that impact. The track layout is so different from that of the previous races in Austria that it's difficult to determine how effective they were. Although the Red Bull's front tires were having trouble quickly reaching their ideal temperature, the Red Bull was the quickest qualifier at Silverstone, which may have had a lot to do with the fact that the practice was performed in the coldest circumstances of the weekend. The RB16B appeared to be faster in all other running on a track temperature high enough to eliminate the Red Bull's tyre issues. But Mercedes's decision to choose a rather low rear wing level in this instance will undoubtedly have been influenced by the most recent revisions. They were running more wings than Red Bull in Austria. The block of grey at the bottom of the average speed chart indicates that Mercedes has issues with the power unit and the chassis is also problematic as evidenced by its poor qualifying results. Due to numerous concerns regarding the performance of the Mercedes power unit, Toto Wolff has been extremely defensive about it. How does Alpine avoid all the terrific measures Mercedes experienced in the race? Find out with F1 Viral. Pat Fry, chief technical officer for Alpine, has explained how the Anstone-based team has been able to control the porpoising problem that has surprised a number of the top F1 teams. Porpoising has emerged as a regular issue for teams as they try to find out how to handle their new vehicles in light of Formula 1's changeover from an overbody to a ground effect, aerodynamic philosophy for 2022. Porpoising, to put it simply, is the highly noticeable car bouncing that is particularly noticeable on vehicles like the Ferrari and Mercedes. The area underneath an automobile through which air may pass gets smaller as it moves down a straight at an increasing speed with the floor falling to the ground. The amount of air that can move through the gap decreases as it widens. There comes a time when there is no turning back and the air can no longer physically travel under the car the airflow underneath stalls when this occurs. As a result, the suction effect is lessened and the car rises back into the air before being pulled back down by the obvious increased airflow. This starts a loop of bouncing that gets worse as the car's speed increases. Ferrari's F175 has been the car to beat in the initial races despite still bouncing its way down the straights, while porpoising has had an impact on Mercedes's performance requiring them to run their W13 with greater ground clearance to compensate. How the porpoising effect has been a profit for Alpine in the grid? Learn from Fry, who entered F1 in 1987. Fry continued by describing how Alpine's design is different from other cars on the grid and saying that the A522's extreme width has worked to their advantage since they can stiffen the floor more than the teams with a narrow coke bottle form. It's obviously aerodynamically motivated. The floor stays of all those who opted for a very small coke bottle profile cannot be very far outboard. To harden the floor, you must drag kilograms into it, but they haven't. We therefore have a rather broad coke profile, which makes it simpler for us. Fry also discussed that Alpine had a goal of having a stiff floor and are far in excess of the FIA criteria, giving them room to bring the stiffness back through measured improvements. It's true that Mercedes doesn't yet have a suitable low downforce rear wing assembly, but all of its customers are, in some ways, experiencing difficulties unrelated to the engine. So Alpine is taking a lead with this floor. However, nothing could be said yet. For more information, stay tuned to F1 Viral. Subscribe to us so that you don't miss any news from your favorite game.